And did the devil help him? No, he got caught. He went to jail. Yeah. So how satanic's that? You know, was the devil looking after him? Ooh, no. Once again, you, you know, felon. the cop came Another and arrested felon. him and said, you will go to jail. And the judge said, go to jail. Where was the devil helping him? I mean, it's all bullshit. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So he's really satanic, is he? Because he stabbed some fag or whatever. You know, duh. He was attacked by this guy and he defended himself. And, um, so why is he in prison if, he got, if he's the one that got attacked? Now it's uh, the, the loser of a battle. He's all claimed to be the victim. You know? Once again, um, People were kind of young, people were really influenced by what was going on. I mean, I think it turned into one of those, everybody wanted to outdo each other. I'm pretty happy I never got that far. I mean, I remember I had my ideas about something, but it, it never happened, thank fucking God. You know, there was a spate of murders and people burning down churches and that kind of thing, you know, committing violent acts against Christians and that kind of thing. It just seemed to be more, like a, more of a trend than anything else. We are not linked by the way we are dressed by the fact we have long hair, or dressed in black and all that. All these are no links. We are just, it's not a, um, a reminiscence of the heavy metal spirit. It's just like, in the world, we are all different facets of humanity and we are not tied by anything. It's just about Satan and violence. We're living in our own world, you know, we don't really want to, you know, end up in jail. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, we have reached a point in evolution where we do not have to take swings at each other. We can solve most things, conflicts, without actually behaving like cavemen. You know, we hurt people with our music. That's what we do. Something from abruptum was angry with me because something like uh, the, the, the scene almost you know split like uh, attitude wise because of the who's rooting for Count Grishnak and who's rooting for your own you know and uh, everyone was like figuring that I, I, I didn't give a fuck about your own uh, but I like both guys I, I, don't, I think the suicide of the dead was uh, probably a personal thing for him I mean you know I don't think that he had any idea that that would become a big part of a black metal explosion thing that happened a couple of years later. I think that was on his mind. I, mean, I think what actually made that into a big deal was the fact that photos of it existed mm -hmm. and they got spread throughout the world and they eventually ended up on a, um, excuse me, on a record sleeve. Through the guy who threw a bear in my face. I'll buy you another one after. If I had paid good money to go and see a band and some jerk next to me was throwing something at the band, I'd fucking knock his lights out. You know, who the fuck are you to stop the show when I'm coming to see a fucking band I want to see? I think it was in uh, Hilversum in Holland or some other town, I don't remember. And when people had this idea of a uh, different idea of stage diving, they were like, instead of diving off the stage, they were diving on the stage. So after like five people have been diving into my uh, bass guitar and into my microphone, I was like bleeding from my mouth, I got really pissed off. And I just like warned people, uh, okay, the next guy who's diving into me, he's going to get his ass kicked. I'm warning you, I'm a nice guy, but I will kick your ass. And of course, one minute later, there was this guy flying into me. And of course, you know, I kicked his ass and throw him off the stage. Then I suddenly uh, discovered what I've done, was because some bastards had uh, thrown a fucking crippled into me with like a, what do you call it, CP. Mm -hmm. So I just like, I threw him off the stage, he was lying on the floor, all shaking, he looked at me like a, you know, like a small dog or whatever, like, <gasps> I was like, oh, I was like, sorry, man. <laughs> that was actually a very terrible act to do, no? Yeah. Throw a cripple at me, you know? Who does that? Yeah. Kerrang's just a load of fucking rubbish. It's a joke. I mean, Kerrang, Karap, fucking Kaching. You like sell out mag. You know, you know, basically Kerrang cut its hair. Uh, Kerrang has now got short hair. It's not a metal mag. Not when you've got busted on the front cover yeah. and other fucking such lame shit. Of course it uh, helps in some way spreading or uh, giving the scene in Norway some kind of effect. I 
I think that article did very little other than ridicule black metal. We were actually included in the article about being one of the bands that the inner circle despised because of the Levain uh, Church of Satan uh, connection. Um, obviously, I was actually in contact with some of the people that were in the groups, uh, and uh, I never had a problem with them personally. Yeah, sure, we didn't uh, agree on everything we uh, believed, but really, in life, who the fuck does? But I think the whole battle and the whole imagery of the whole black metal scene over there was really hyped up by the media and Kerrang was a big part of that. We absolutely hated the fact that black metal wasn't Kerrang, you know, it was kind of, I suppose it was, the, it was that kind of elitism, whether it was your thing and you didn't want people who were involved in the sort of overground scene who casually bought Napalm Death albums to all of a sudden discover, you know, Mayhem and all these kind of bands. But um, in hindsight, Kerrang! is a tab is tabloid journalism and they were just looking for an exciting story. Emperor and Cradle of Filth, wonderful examples of that. I don't think any of those bands got any fucking respect until they suddenly exploded and started selling a lot. All of a sudden, everybody's their friend. Before yeah. that, you know, um, they were ridiculed in, in magazines like Kerrang!